Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the dirty, dirty south right here in Alabama. Uh, in the shop chilling, had a great day, weather was nice, about 67-ish. I think it might have even touched or tickled the 70s a little bit, but a great day to grind. But uh, this video is a little late in the day because it had already started to get a little cool and the temperature is dropping a little bit. So we had to close the garage door and really get back on. But the last video that I posted was dealing with small, uh, fun, small projects that you guys can do to that don't require a lot of money, especially. And I guess this is just a series for um i feel like it's going to be a series because there are a ton of small projects that uh you can do to maximize and make a lot of money off of and it doesn't require you to spend a lot of money so uh again this is another one for those beginner to intermediate crafters out there in the leather world who uh you don't have uh, a lot of money to invest into your tools, a lot of money to invest into material. So I guess basically this is just taking it to where you guys can go and spend 60 bucks or so uh, at your local uh, leather supply store. And that's simply, again, by buying a lot of single shoulders, which will run you anywhere. Uh, you, sometimes you can catch them on sale, especially with Tandy. You guys know that I'm a Tandy boy, not a Tandy representative, because Tandy don't pay me. Hint, hint, Tandy. You know, but, because I give you guys a lot of shout outs, Tandy. But, um, you can go and buy a lot of single shoulders, uh, and, and especially, uh, and you can buy them in all different weights. And different things like that. Everything from a 1.5 ounce all the way up to a 8 to 9 ounce. And those single shoulders are designed or are made for small projects. And eventually we're going to get up to doing some of your small compact holsters for you holster, holster makers out there. Where uh, again, you don't have to go and buy a side or a whole cow. But... Just minimizing your spending to maximize your profit based on your skill level. Because I know some crafters out there who are booming holsters right now. Um, pan from everything from a pancake holster to a inside the waistband holster to a small Derringer 38, 32, whatever have you. And they're still getting 125 or better, you know, for one holster. So... You can do a lot with just a single shoulder to build up your bank to where you guys can start spending more money into your tools and a lot of more money into different patterns. Or uh, if you have a local uh, crafter there that is that is doing their own artwork as far as the Sheridan design or anything like that to show you guys about decorative cuts, deep beveling or reverse beveling and all of that stuff. If you have somebody, now you're making a little revenue coming in to where you can pay those advanced crafters or crafters who've been around for 15, 20, 30 years or better. And you can spend them $100 for that time on a two hour class. That's pretty much standard around the board. Uh, you have some crafters that's charging $350, you know, but those guys are like living legends in the game right now. But that's not really what I want to talk to you guys about. Here it is again with another small, a fun size small project in this video that anybody can make these. Anybody can make these and you can make a lot of money off of it. And this is basically... Not basically, this is really, actually, more towards your creative side as far as the artwork. Now, a lot of times, and I recommend that anybody, uh, especially when you're doing uh, artwork or artwork that you might have bought, patterns that you may have bought from other more experienced leather crafters, you guys can always even buy my patterns. I have patterns for sale. Uh, all you have to do is just email me or shoot me a message in the comment section below or you can hit me up at premierleathercrafters.com. Let me know what project that you really want to work in and if you want the, some, some artwork, you can pay for those 
artwork there. You don't have to worry about the cowboy coming back and suing you because that's what I do this for. I do this to give people a little bit of incentive to where you don't have to just keep going and buying all of these patterns and books and stuff from from whatever leather supply store you're getting them from. And it gives you a little bit of creativity. Now, the great part about ordering my patterns, which I'm pretty sure is a lot, uh, has a go on with a lot of crafters out there who draw their own patterns. Um, you don't necessarily, I do my patterns just like I do my projects. They're one of a kind patterns. So if you buy a pattern from me, it, uh, just for instance, today what we're gonna get into real quick is custom valet trays. And these are hot money makers right now. But if you say, hey, cowboy, I want to do some ballet trays and uh, I need some artwork. So what will happen is uh, I will sit back and draw up. You'll get five patterns, five patterns, five different patterns that will be yours, yours and yours alone. You can get those five patterns. And if you wanted to sell them and make money off of Cowboy don't have a problem with it because I believe there is enough money for all of us to make out here and we don't step on each other's toes. So I'm not one of those crafters that's going to sit back and tell you, well, uh, you got to tell everybody this is a such and such a XYZ uh, pattern and all of this kind of stuff. No, when you buy my patterns from me, my pattern packs from me, they belong to you. So you get five patterns for $25 to $30, depending on the size of the project. Sometimes it even go up to $60 and $75, depending on the size. But it gives you that pattern to where you can say, hey, this is a this, that, and a third leather company's pattern, and I don't have a problem, and you don't have to worry about coming back and hunting me down. But uh, me hunting you now, I'm saying, hey, look, you're not giving me my credit. Man, shut up. Buy the pattern, you bought all rights and copyrights and everything to that. And you can best believe that I'm not gonna sell you a pattern and 15 other people the same different pattern or the same pattern. So everybody will have their own different pattern. But if you're interested in that, hit the comments below or you can email me at Premier Leather Crafters at yahoo.com or you can just call me. The number is in the bio uh, and also on this page. But Make sure you get you some tracing film. Tandy sells this stuff by the yards and you can do a lot with that. And then I'll show you in another video how you can preserve those patterns on this tracing film because especially if you're doing duplicate pieces of the same pattern, then you don't wear out your tracing film. I'll show you guys how to do that. But that is simple. That'll be in the part two part of this video. But first thing first, Let's get off into the measuring part of doing these custom valet trays. And I want to show everybody how you can take these valet trays and you can make them different sizes, depending on how many you want to get out of that single shoulder. Now, single shoulder is going to range anywhere from six to eight square feet. So this pattern here is eight inches square, eight all the way around, which is vital to, um, and you probably can cut out of a single shoulder, I probably can get anywhere from four to six out of this on that eight inch pattern. That's why it's always good to go down to your local leather store and pick your own hides. Because if they're running a special on it like Tandy usually does, Tandy usually runs a special uh, for $29.99, and then, but they might have a 10 square foot or 11 square foot piece that you can personally go down there and slide out of that stack, and then you can get even more of these out of. Now, woo! What is a valet tray? Basically, in a nutshell, a valet tray is a whatnot tray. Now, these things can lay on your kitchen bar, your coffee table, your end table, your nightstand, wherever you want to put them. And basically, you can put whatever you want to put in them. Now, so how do we get these? Um, because I, I even looked in the Leathers Guild and I tried to find a tray pattern in the Leathers Guild and nobody had one. It was all just people who were posting their different uh, creations of valet trays. So what I decided to do, your man, the cowboy, right here at Premier Leather Crafters, I'm gonna shake the game up and show you guys how you can do these. Now, very simple. What you want to do is, like this pattern here is an eight by eight. 
and you want to make sure that you have a straight edge or a square, a T-square. This is regular poster board, nothing famous or nothing strategic about this. You can also, you guys already know, if you don't have, you don't have to go out and buy poster paper. Uh, you can just go and save a cereal box, a mashed potato box, a Pop-Tart box, whatever kind of box you already have in your cabinet, and you can use that as a pattern. You can even use the laundry soap box if you're still dealing with powder. You know, this is 2019. Everybody got liquid powder right now. But here we go. And to speed this along, and this will get you guys up to point because we're already at the 10 and a half inch mark because I did a little rambling. But uh, go ahead and cut you out an 8 by 8 square. And in the next video, I'm going to show you guys actually how to go in. And uh, now, real, real quick, once you do that 8 by 8 square, you want to come in on these sides, all four sides, and this is a one inch, uh, I came in one inch exactly. Now make sure you use the same ruler or the same tape measure to do all your products. Don't use two different tape measures because what I found, um, an inch is not always an inch on every ruler. Some of them could have been made on a Friday. Some could have been made on a Monday. So somebody could have been off a 16th of an inch. And that's the difference. That's why it's so important to make sure you use the same tape measure or the same ruler or T-square in the whole entire project. In whatever project you're doing, make sure you use the same measuring tool. Now, I come in an inch all the way across. And then we line those off. And then I took that same... Uh, yardstick or same ruler and I drew my angles di uh, drew my lines diagonally across there now the purpose for doing this the center part of the tray is what you want to put your artwork on and feature that part this is the size of the tray so I'm going to fold this down and let you guys see to get you to a point and then I'm going to come back and we're going to fold these edges up and just crease them because this is going to give us parts of our valet tray. And now a lot of people who do these valet trays, a lot of them use Chicago screws. Some of them just basically sew or stitch the corners of the valet trays together to keep them together. So if you don't want to, uh, if you don't have it to go and spend a lot on Chicago screws, which those are make those make it a, to me those make it a look a little bit professional, and uh, a little bit more professional by using the Chicago screws, but you don't have to. So what's going to happen here is, and I'm gonna get you guys to this point. We're gonna take these and fold these ends up, and you're gonna crease um, these corners right here. So we're going to just fold that over. And then I'm going to let you guys get this far. And now I'm going to keep recording here tonight. So actually, I'm going to try to post both of these videos so they'll be right there together. But I'm going to get you this far together on your valet trays. So now we're going to put these corners together. And this is what's going to form that little lip right there. Now, again, you guys can see how this is coming along. I, I, I believe you guys know exactly what we're, where we are going. So I don't want to insult you on by keep just trying to be so elementary with this. But you guys can see where we're headed. Now, you can pretty much see where your valet tray is forming together. Now, uh, those of you who have Chicago screws, you'll basically punch your holes in these ends in your leather, and then you'll run your Chicago screws through. Now, for those of you who don't have Chicago screws, then all you have to do is come back and run you about three, four looping stitches all the way across. Now, you can take these and use your chisel punch and come all the way out. And But now, if I'm using my chisel punch, I want to take that chisel punch and go all the way around this. So when you're stitching and lacing this together, you'll always have that nice uniform seam. Now, in the interior of that, that's where we're going to put some type of 
creative stamping or carving, but we're going to do some type of tooling work in there. And you can sell these valet trays anywhere, depending on the size, anywhere from 15 to 65 bucks. And these basically just where people are going to come and you might see some put their, their car keys, house keys, pair of shades. Uh, the bigger they are, then you can start putting uh, some of your letters and your bills in there. It's just something to hold in a centralized lo location in your house or in the customer's house. But they call these valet trays. So with that, you guys can see where we're going. So I'm going to actually take this, transfer it over to the leather in the next video, and then start coming up with some nice crafty tool and stuff that we're going to show you guys how to do that. So let me sign off on this one. We're at the 15 and a half minute mark. So this is the Leather Cowboy. Stay tuned for part two of nice, fun, inexpensive uh, projects that you can utilize to make a lot of money off of. So stay tuned for part two. I'm going to end this one and then go ahead right into the next one and start in the next one so uh, you guys can see exactly and actually how we're going to make these. All right, peace. See you on the next one.